Okay, so we're in part two of a discussion of Tcheles. Last week, what we did was we first learned what Tcheles is from the halachic perspective, in that the Torah commands that we have a Tcheles, a blue string to our corners. And the Torah adds to that corner that already has the blue string, you should add, I'm oh, sorry, not reverse. Torah says you should have fringes on your corners. That is, it's just the white strings. And to that string, to that corner with the white string, you should add a blue string. And we learned that they aren't dependent on each other. That they're, they're both one mitzvah, but I, in either or, the person has fulfilled the entire mitzvah. So it's a unique kind of mitzvah and that there's two, two like almost options in how you should fulfill, can fulfill the mitzvah. Although obviously optimally uh, you're doing both white and blue. Then we discussed a little bit of the history of when it may have ended sometime after the Gemara yeah. is over, sometime over the year 500, yeah. somewhere around the year 500, because we see in the Gemara's time, someone who says he brought it from Merch Yisrael, or at least someone who tried to bring it from Merch Yisrael. And then we see the Tanchuma written a few hundred years later, where they say we don't have Tchilas anymore. So somewhere in between then it's been gone. And for generations, that was it. Until, as we said last week, came along the Rebbe of Radzin, Izbitzer Radzin Rebbe, who said, that it's time to look for Trellis. He wrote a number of books. He did research, traveled to Italy. And his method of searching for the Trellis was to, which would seem like the correct method, but you'll see in a second, there's a different method. His method was to look for, go through all the descriptions of our sages as to what the Trellis is. We saw one of them from the Gemara that it looks like the sea. Its blood is, uh, it comes up once every 70 years. We had like a Rashi that indicated it came from the earth rather than the ocean. But he went through all the descriptions of our sages as to what the trail, what the trailazon, this item from which the trailas, from which the blue dye arrives, right? Yeah, this is yeah. A, going a little quickly because I'm recapping. And he came to the conclusion that it's the common cuttlefish, that, that, that fish you see in the picture there. That's the dye that makes the blue. What's unique about his perspective, his, uh, his um, research is that he took the blood, treated it only using, only using items that would have been available to the sages back in the Mishnahic era and was and successfully came to a blue that didn't fade. Treating it with things that were available then. Yes, right. Yeah. That's right. Because if he uses modern technology to treat the blue, to treat the blood, then it's obviously not what they had then. Because the Gemara says that it was treated and the Gemara says that it didn't fade. So you have to treat it in a manner that would have been treated back then. How did he know that? So he, he looked at what was available at the time during the history different translations of what the of the words the Gemara uses, I guess. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but he used methods that would have been available then to treat it. Now, this is not the same method. I kept on mentioning last week that Rabbi Cook did, a, did research on it. I, I don't know why that name was in my head. I, mean, I know why, but it's a, it's a mistake. Rabbi Herzog. I oh. confused them because they're both chief rabbis of Israel. So I confer, confused the two. It was not Rabbi Cook who did the research. It was Rabbi Yitzchak Herzog. Rabbi Dr. Yitzchak Herzog, who wrote a, who wrote a thesis on Trellis. Mm -hmm. And on the screen here, I have it pulled up. It's in like an old font. I'll send it to you guys. It's just interesting to see. And he comes to the conclusion that it's this snail looking shell fish type thing. Hexaplus trunculus. So it's not like it. It's just different than the common, common cuttlefish. Now, the research he did was primarily, uh, a lot of it was based on what the Gemara says. But he, his, his primary research was around the archaeology. He found some trades post up near Haifa, where the Gemara says that's where it was sold, where this fish would have been sold. And he did like a bunch of research, like that type of research, archaeology and that kind of thing. Now, the problem is, this is the problem that he faced, was that he tried as he would the dye that emerged from this her hexaplus trunculus, which is some sort of snail thing, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. The problem is, it's like, uh, what are each of these? The problem is that every time he tried it, it came out of purple, not a blue. Wow. So this is where it becomes uh, questionable if this is the right one. And there's history about how it was like, what, what people follow it and don't follow it and whatnot. But this is overall what, what he did. What was the purple Sorry? What was the purple accepted by the community? I don't know that it was. I'm just telling you oh, why, his, why his view came into a challenge. The view of Rabbi of the Ishbitzer Rabbi was challenged, not on the color basis, but on the basis of the halacha. Like, do you match up to this? You ignore this source, or maybe it doesn't match that source. 
whereas whereas uh, Rabbi Herzog's challenge was practical. He couldn't get the wasn't wool. He couldn't get the right blue. Well, maybe back then it was different, or maybe back then it was treated differently. I mean, I, who knows? But he, he faced that challenge. Okay, so that's as far as the research goes on the color. Now let's get the to blood was black because it's in the first position. Was black. What did the Gemara say? I it was uh, black. Here, I, I, I have the Gemara. Hold on a second. What is black? No, it's blue. The Gemara says it's sky blue, right? What did the Gemara no, say? No, they make it sky blue, yeah. but it said something black. Let's see yeah, what the Gemara says. Ink is normally black. Ink and was treating it. That's correct. Uh, okay, the Chilazayin, the Chilazayin, which is the source of the sky blue dye used in ritual fringes, has the following characteristics. A, its body resembles the sea, which the cuttlefish does. Two, its form resembles that of a fish, which the cuttlefish does, although it's not actually a fish because it's more like a... It's more like a kind of octopus of some sort. Sorry? Mollusk. Like a mollusk. What do you call it? Yeah. It's two. Number three, it emerges once in 70 years. I don't know if that works for the common, common cuttlefish or not. And four, with its blood, one dyes wool sky blue for ritual fringes. Where do I get black from? Sorry? What is emerging? Okay, that's a good question. So um, Rambam says it emerges from the ocean, which ocean is also questionable in Rambam because Rambam uses the words Yabamelech. We discussed this a little bit last yeah, week. Yeah. Rambam uses the word Yamamelech, which usually means the really means Dead the Sea, but it really means the Mediterranean. And also because, because the Dead Sea isn't in the tribe of Zvulun, oh. which is where the Gemara says the Chilazim emerged. Yeah, Rashi says it earth. comes from the earth, okay. not rather than the ocean, even though the Rivash said we saw it, said it does come from the ocean. There's all kinds of confusion exactly so what it is, which is why no one uses it. Which is why, well, no, no, no one did use it for so many years until until the Isbitsa came along and said, let's look for it. And then, and then those Hasidim and uh, the Brestle apparently also followed his research and they used that. I'm not going to figure out is why did they even check on nothing? Because that puts out black in the Oh, yes. Uh, oh, the black. You're, the reason why we think the black is because the, the, this cuttlefish puts out like this black uh, mist of some sort to hide from enemies. And that's, the, that's what he used to turn into a blue dye. By treating it, that's what this uh, rabbi. Right. Also, oh, you need that blood. Treating that blood, treating it with various different chemicals, and then turning it into an ink that way. Also, oh, one of the the ways they did it was with that black mist. That was that was uh, rabbi the the Isbitsa Rebbe. But in the sages from before, and they also did all that. If he's correct in his research, then yes, then that's what they did. If he's not correct, so they use some other fish. Sorry. Why is it not our candidate? Okay, so why isn't the Rebbe on board? Right. Why isn't Chabad on board? This is the question. The yeah. Right. Why isn't Chabad on board? So at least have your own fish. Oh. At least have your own. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's a very good question. <laughs> because that, that's, that's a very good question. Very good question. A, why doesn't Chabad use this option? And B, why doesn't Chabad use any option? Go do some other research if you don't think this is the right one. That's a good question. Now, actually, yeah. the Rebbe Hashab that we're going to address today, we're going to learn from today, actually addresses the second question. He doesn't address why the cuttlefish is wrong. Mm. He addresses why... Chabad doesn't search for one at all. Sure. Yeah, we're going to learn about that in a minute. Why Chabad doesn't search for it at all? Now, why other communities might not search for a different fish is a different question. Maybe there are some out there who are doing research. Not maybe. There are certainly out there people who are doing research trying to see if this is the right one or maybe looking for others, other candidates. But there are certainly many halachic um, challenges to this candidate, to this candidate, the common cuttlefish, which at the time, even when he published and he came out, this is what this is it. There were many challenges to his position then as well. But we're going to take now Chabad approach and see why does the Chabad doesn't go with any fish. And is there there are different translations for Chilazan in Hebrew? Well, that's the question. What is well, modern Hebrew doesn't count. Right. You can call modern Hebrew can say Chilazan whatever you want. But sorry. You put it into Google, what would it translate it to? I, I think in modern Hebrew, it means it's a certain kind of fish, but it doesn't mean anything to ancient Hebrew. Right, right because that's what I'm saying. The, the, no, 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 it doesn't. But, but even if it did, it doesn't mean anything. The modern, right. the modern language of Hebrew doesn't tell us anything about what they meant in the Gemara's at the time. Right. right? Anyway, okay, so now let's see the Rebbe's, the Chabad view. So we're going to start with the letter from the Rebbe. What I'm you just gonna say that I'm pretty sold on the cuttlefish right now. I'm gonna have to do. It, a... it is very impressive. <laughs> it's a, it's very impressive research, and um, and when we see the Rebbe Shab's response, we're gonna see that he's he's not at all undermining the research. Yeah. He's just going to dispute the fact that we should be using it, yeah. not undermine the research per se. Um, but let, let's see what the Rebbe has to say. Okay, let, 
We'll get to it. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing we're looking at is a letter from the Rebbe. And this letter appears in a book called Shulchan Menachem. Shulchan Menachem is a beautiful book where a team of scholars, I guess, in Eretz Yisrael collected from all of the Rebbe's writings and talks, anything that's related to practical, relevant halacha, they collected and compiled into seven books. We on this now? Yes. No, uh, no, the other one. The one so that there's the text under the picture of the common cuttlefish. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah another one is... Yeah. Oh, it's the so text. Maybe you have. That's right. Do you have it? Yeah. So text under there. So th they they so there they collected and they inserted this letter in which they addresses this practical question about the chi about the trailers, the chilozen. So writes the Rebbe. The Masha Kosov, with regard to that which you write, Al Derech Chilozen, the trailers, with respect to the chilozen and the trailers. And you're asking me, says the Rebbe, you're asking me about how we should actually act in practice after nowadays, the tzitzis, excuse me, in our tzitzis. So the questioner is not asking on the theory about the research. He's asking, what should I do, it would seem, or what should we do? He you know says, no, um, maybe if we open up the original source, yes. Okay. okay. Who, who the questioner is, you mean? Yeah, yeah so we have to look up the letter. The yeah, it wouldn't be on, uh, could be fine, could be easily found. Okay, now, it says the Rebbe, Hare Yedua, it's well known, Ashev Heid Ishuaze, there was a great tumult about this, the Snagdulaze, and it was it was opposed. The Gamma Pinigla, and the opposition was also from the halachic level, from the revealed dimension of Torah. Kedai Loi Olam, the great of the world, when this new idea of having the cuttlefish as a trellis emerged from Rajzin, it caused a great tumult, and there were many great leaders who responded against this, and their opposition was also halachic in nature, which means the opposition was Kabbalistic, maybe historical, maybe halachic, and they were saying even on the halachic level there were oppositions to this view. And what was it? Did it tell you? I don't know. I didn't research. But the Gam Chak Chak and more by the Shabbos Moseidin, the Rebbe Ashab as well, Loi Hiskim Alachidush did not agree to this new way of thinking about reintroducing the Trelas, the Shum Oifen under any circumstances. The Rebbe writes, The Ain Atatachas Yadi Mikhtav Beze. At the moment, I don't have the letter with me, the Rebbe Ashab's letter in which he writes against the Trelas. Since then, it's been published, and we're going to learn it. Debra writes, I don't have it right now. But I remember from reading this letter at one time, says the Rebbe, she may be that he writes there, the Rebbe Hashab writes in this letter, that in, based on Kabbalah, the idea of Tchilas will be, so I don't remember exactly what, what the Rebbe Hashab wrote, says the Rebbe, but I, if I remember correctly, but I do, sorry, not if I remember correctly, but I do remember that he writes, that according to Kabbalah, we wait for Mashiach to come before we have to kill us. Oh, Based on Kabbalah, for Kabbalistic reasons, which we're going to get to. question there. Yes. I would have, that would have sat well with me before we learned that it did exist at one point. Yes, so we're going to get to that as well. The Rebbe is going to address that as well. Why Kabbalistically, it, just, why Kabbalistically it existed at one point, why it doesn't exist now, and why it will exist when Mashiach no, comes. I'm saying in Mashiach argument because it's not like Mashiach existed during so we're going to address that. We're going to, way, so Rebbe, the very good question. The Rebbe Shav is going to address that. Okay. okay. But, the Rebbe, but the Rebbe concludes with the following words. And as for us, we only have the words of the Rebbe. What the Rebbe is saying is like this. When there is a discussion, you have four, five, six opinions. You go to your Rebbe, and what your Rebbe says, that's what you do. So there's a bunch of opinions on what to do with Trelas. And our Rebbe, the Rebbe Shav came and said, no. So we say no. You're going to come and give me arguments why this is the right to list. Thank you very much. There's other opinions. And our Rebbe's on the other side. So that's the end of the story. That's pretty much what they were saying in this line. Just trust the Rebbe. Yeah, in some ways trust the Rebbe, but also that how else do you act in the world right. when there's a bunch of opinions? Right. You have your Rebbe. They're all valid opinions. Very good. No one's not denying right. it. Right. But our Rebbe came and said, this is not the way to go. So we're not going to finish right. Right. And the story. Right? And, and he cites to a Gemara. He cites to a Gemara and Sukkah, which we will look at at the end of the class. We'll look at the Gemara and Sukkah. So for now, let's go to the other text. Let's see the Rebbe Shab's letters. The Rebbe writes that the Rebbe Shab wouldn't agree under any circumstances to the Trelis, 
So let's have a look at the other text, the one that has the big box on the top, this one. So it says on top there, Shalos Chuvas Torah Shalom, the sponsor from, called Torah Shalom, the Torah of Shalom, from the Rebbe Rashab. So this is a book of letters that are halachic in nature, halachic response from the Rebbe Rashab. Yeah. The Rebbe Rashab, the fifth. No, I'm saying, the Torah Shalom is Shalom the Rebbe. That's correct. Right. Uh, the fifth Chabad Rebbe. So this is the letter that the Rebbe said. This is the letter. He remember. He doesn't see, he doesn't remember. He says, yeah, I don't I have it, yeah, but, but I remember he writes. Yeah, that's the one. Right? This is the letter. So. Yes. So this letter is written to, right. if, if you look at the other page, on the second page, there, you'll see a picture of a, of, a, of a scholar, of a rabbi. That's the one who receives the letter. That's the son of the... That's right. So the picture of the guy in the, the picture in the second page behind the cuttlefish, uh, the second page there, that picture, that person is the recipient of this letter. Hmm. And his father is the one who wrote that the uh, common cuttlefish, that's the tchelos. That's right. the tchelos from which you make tchelos. So this is the recipient of his letters. Let's read. Baruch Hashem Yon Beis, Monday, 20th Shvat, Tafer Simach Zayin, Würzburg. Rav Shev is writing from Würzburg. Russia? Uh, no, I think it's actually outside of Russia. The Rav Shev used to travel. I mean, the other Rav did. Okay. Kvayi Rav to the to, to the honorary great scholar, Hamma Forsen was well known. Noida be Yisrael, he's known amongst the people. Shmoy is his name. Latil v'tiferes, for praise and for glory. Mo'ez, you know, strength and, and grandeur. Yiddish Hashem Aitzaroi, his treasure is the treasure of the fear of heaven. Uh, liner, that's the recipient's letter, the picture you saw earlier. Yes, he's a Rebbe. He's a Rebbe of Rajin, he's writing to. Right? He, he succeeded his father as a Rebbe of Rajin. Rajin is Biseh. Acha Drisha Shalom Kroi Lakvoi Terasa. After appropriate greetings, as is appropriate for a man of your stature. Hmm. Now, as Sifri quite aviv, the letters of your father, Hagavat Tzadik Zal, the Tzadik of blessed memory, Asher Kevdani Behem Kvayt which you honored me with, Kibalti Ba'ava, I received them lovingly. So thank you so much for the books. The Goydel Tach Lekvayt Terasa Shich Yalze, and thank you very much for these books. He's right to some more poetic language, but this is what he says. Very diplomatic. Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very appropriate, very um, respectful, and so on. It's been a while, says the Rebbe Shab, that I've wanted to see these letters, these books. So thank you for sending them. Now, as far as the actual arguments presented in these books, I cannot agree to this. Why? Yan, considering the fact that the Rebbe of blessed memory, he refers here to the Alter Rebbe, but look at the Torah, this book, look at the Torah. Bahabir Devahoyola Chem Tzitzis, Dursh Beis, in the second Mimer, explaining the passage describing the Tzitzis, Perek Beis, chapter two. There, my, my great grandfather, the Alter Rebbe, Tafas the Pshittus, takes unequivocally the view of the Pri Chaim, the Pri Chaim being um, the uh, prodigal student of Arizal who transcribed Arizal's writings. So, the Bashab's right. I, I, Thank you so much for the books. I really didn't want to see this. And I love the books, but I can't agree to what you're asking, to what you're, what you're promoting. Because my great-grandfather, Alter Rebbe, writes that he takes the view, like he just, without any equivocation, takes the view of the pre Chaim, which says, the Bismana is that nowadays in exile, ain't trelas. there is no trelas. It's because my grandfather quotes just that question, the pre Chaim saying that no trelas nowadays, and I cannot go along with your argument that there is. Well, maybe Al a little few years before, before the, his father. So, so then, so only, that, he only came out now. See, look, look, the, the, the Rebbe's writing that I'm not going along with Tcheles because the Rebbe Hashab wrote it. The Rebbe Hashab saying I'm not going along with Tcheles because the Alter wrote it. And I'm going along with no Tcheles because the Rebbe wrote it. Right? That's, that's basically what's happening. Yeah, but I'm trying right? to say, because he, he said the Alter of is mon, his time. No, it's not as that he means it's mana, well, the, 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 the pre-Eitz Chaim wrote with which means it's even more even farther oh, back. Manazer means Manazer means Golos, exile. Okay, he gives another few more citations from the Tzimach Tzadik and others from the, from the Alt Rebbe. So go to the next page and we'll read the next paragraph. The next paragraph on the next page. He gives other citations in Chassidus where there it says about uh, Tzilis not available until Mashiach comes. Now, Continues the Rebbe Shab. Masha Inye, Masha Kosa, that which your father wrote, Bein Trelas, 
in a book called Ein Trelis. Pat Gimel Sif Aleph, section three, subsection one, your father wrote, referring to the pre Chaim. The pre Chaim, as we just said, writes that until Mashiach comes, no Trelis, for whatever Kabbalistic reason. When was the pre Chaim? Sorry? How many years ago was the pre Chaim? The pre Chaim is Arizal time about 500 years ago, probably. Maybe, maybe five, 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 six, five, six hundred years ago, maybe. He wasn't there when the yeah. sage was No, no. So he says, so your father writes in response to that position, the Lafi de Azu, et cetera, me meets us tefillin. That Rashi puts the word, et cetera. Now, what, 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 he, what, what, the, what this rabbi argued was that if you're not going to have tefillin, because it doesn't belong in exile time, and the basic reason is because uh, in, in exile time, we aren't at a level that we can reach the spiritual energy of Trelas. We can't reach that. In times of Bismillah, we were capable of reaching it. When Mashiach comes, we are capable of reaching it. And nowadays, we cannot reach the Trelas. Yeah. So says uh, Rabbi Liner in his book, the father of the recipient of this letter, that if that's the case, we shouldn't be wearing Tefillin Sharesh either. The Tefillin Sharesh is also too high level. Huh. And he cites the Kabbalah for why that is. Huh. So, in other words, Rabbi is arguing, if you're going to give me the Kabbalistic line of reasoning, but that's why I'm not trailers, and take off your Shorosh. But you keep your Shorosh on, right? So then put your trailers on also. Right. That's what this person's arguing. Yeah. So it's, the Rabbi Shabbat doesn't even want to articulate those words that we're not wearing to fill in Shorosh. So he puts the word Chulu, etc. Right? <laughs> but really, he means no, no fill in, no fill in Shorosh if, that's, if, if your argument is right. The Redeemer is saying that. Yeah. The Redeemer is saying, yes. Right. If you're rejecting trailers on the grounds of Kabbalah because nowadays it doesn't apply, so Kabbalistically speaking, Tefillin Shorosh shouldn't apply either. So says it's a Masedek. I'm sorry. Lefidaiti, in my view, binyonim elu. When you come to these matters of Kabbalah and reaching spiritual energies, energies in the damais milsa and milsa. Don't try to compare one thing to the other. <laughs> like you don't have enough of a handle on the spiritual flow of energy to decide that if it says the words here and it says the words here, therefore they must apply. And if it says don't wear Tefillin, then it means you shouldn't wear Tefillin Shorosh either. We, we, we don't have that kind of knowledge to be able to compare things. The aim on the and we can only take that which it says explicitly. And when it comes to the trailer, it says the says the eight chaim explicitly, no trailers nowadays. And the author never quoted that, so that's it. it it's it's, it's quite shocking the level of Sorry? humility from the what you say? I'm saying it's quite shocking the level of humility from the from the Rebain. They're like like they're like Rebain. And right. they're like, listen, we're not on the huge... Empire. That's what I said, as I said earlier. <laughs> the Rebbe Hashab says, I'm not doing it. The Alter Rebbe says, I'm not doing it because of the Priyat Chaim. The Rebbe Hashab says, I'm not doing it because of the Alter Rebbe. The Rebbe says, I'm not doing it because of the Rebbe Hashab. No matter why I say I'm not doing it. Because the Rebbe said not to finish. It's the end of the story. So we can do lots of research for fun. And right. it's all Torah, not fun. It's for Torah learning. Right. And it advances, enhances our knowledge. But as far as behaving, what the Rebbe says is what we do. And that's it. And here you see the letter saying, that we, said, no, we don't, not just, you, you. Let, let, let's read more, we'll see. Okay, so the aim of El Masha never behind. We only have that which it said explicitly. So where it explicitly says, no trailers nowadays, good. Don't try to compare that to the same energy of Tefillin and therefore you shouldn't have Tefillin. Don't, don't, don't make such games. Okay, then he gets into a little Kabbalistic discussion about uh, distinguishing between Tefillin and Tefillin. And that, and that actually, uh, he tells the Arjuna, you're wrong about the comparison in Tefillin and Tchilis. So first of all, he says, don't make comparisons because it's not our job. Secondly, the comparison is not the same because the energy of Tefillin is not the same energy as, as, as Tchilis. And he goes on to explain in, the, in this next paragraph why. Now go to the next paragraph. I'm not going through all the Kabbalah because that's unnecessary. The next paragraph. Yeah, but you're not going to tell us why. I, I, What's I, the arguments with this one? I don't understand exactly why. Because oh, oh. Tefillin is Chesed, and this one's Buddha, and according to this opinion, Buddha comes higher than Chesed. It helps you. I mean, okay. I know, all right. So far, we're getting no, there's no answer. No, we're it's getting, yeah, but we're, we are going to get more clarity. We're going to get more clarity. So far, we know that our peak Kabbalah, those who understand Kabbalah understand that Tefillin is not appropriate nowadays. That's what we know so far. Yeah, that's what we know so far. And I'm probably, yeah. in the Torah, it says the word Tefillin and Expensive. Yeah. But what? Nothing is mentioned. Torah says to Yeah, it's right there in the Torah. But the the uniqueness is the unique. See, the Torah does say to wear It's right there. The uniqueness is that we learned last week. Even without the trellis, you can still fulfill the mitzvah completely. That's the uniqueness. When it comes to tefillin, unless you have the head to fill in, you don't fulfill your obligation. But 
when it comes to the tzitzis, you fulfill the mitzvah even without the trailers, yeah. even though terrorists has to wear it. That's the uniqueness of this mitzvah. No, 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 he's saying that, no, 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 that's what he's saying. No, 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 no. no. You, you, but we have four corners as a biblical obligation, right? So you have to have trailers. Trader says to a trailers. Right. But this is a unique mitzvah which Trader says, Gemara told us, we this last week, that with half the obligation, you fulfill the whole thing. It's unique. When it comes to filling, no such thing applies. Okay. Let's go to the next paragraph. We're going to get, we're going to get more beef as we go along, not to worry. Dine. Now, the Fima Shekos of the Priya Yitzchayim, based on that which it says in the Priya Yitzchayim, the Priya Yitzchayim, right, the, the, the Kabbalistic source for not having trailers, says, that after the destruction of the temple, that's what he means with Manazeh, after the Chorban, after the destruction, we don't have trailers. Why? We don't reach the spiritual level of Tzitzis, which is the level of Chachma of Ema, whatever that is. But continues the Prayat Chaim, even though we don't reach that level, that level is drawn forth on its own, and they uh, manifest in the Tzitzis, into Bina of Ema, which is the white Tzitzis. So the, the pre Chaim says that the blue is Chachma of Ema and the white is Bina of Ema. Today we can't reach Chachma of Ema. We can only reach Bina of Ema. But nonetheless, the Chachma of Ema, Ema automatically comes into the Bina of Ema. So what you're supposed to achieve through the blue tzitzis automatically comes to the white, white tzitzis, spiritually speaking. That's what the pre Chaim says, without understanding what these levels are. Yeah, but then you have the question that we asked, because he said after the Chorban, it did have the trailers. Oh, oh. Had it. So now that's what the Rebbe addresses. We learned last week that the trailers lasted even after the destruction. Oh, yeah. Yeah? So it says like this. Built cool if he died. It's without a doubt in my mind, says the Rebbe HaShab. HaShab is man sh'achar Chorban. The era, the time, post-destruction of the temple, which is the time of the Mishnah, the times of the Gemara, which is a few hundred years till the trailers stopped, as we learned last week. Right? Hagam shahayot trailers. Even though they had trailers during those times. The spiritual effect of their tzitzis with the chelis is the same thing as us without the Meaning, if the Adizal says that once the Bissim is, is destroyed, you can no longer get the spiritual energy of the blue chelis, then even having it's not going to get it for you. So even those who had the chelis, and they did the right thing because they had the chelis, the terrorist has to put on chelis to put on chelis. But the spiritual energy of chelis, they didn't have. And therefore their tzitzis on the spiritual Kabbalistic level, is the same as ours. Right. So that's the same reasoning for us. Same idea. Of exactly. Now, the reason why the Rebbe is addressing this is because, like, the, is because of the following. Because you could make the mistake of thinking like this. Darizal said, after the Chorban, there's no Tchelas. That's factually not true. There was Tchelas the after the Chorban. So explain to the Rebbe Hashab, Arizal wasn't saying that there wasn't Tchelas after the Basin Mikdash was destroyed. He's saying the spiritual energy of Tchelas wasn't there after the Mishnah was destroyed. And therefore, even if you had Tchelas, you still wouldn't get that energy. Following? Yeah. Not that, not, not that it doesn't exist. Right. The strings could be there, but they wouldn't work. It wouldn't, it wouldn't it would fulfill the mitzvah. Yeah. Halach, be speaking, you did the right thing. But the spiritual energy of the Tchelas wouldn't have been achieved. Because as he writes here, to be Mikdash Talyan Milsa. Because that energy is dependent on the presence of the sanctuary, the temple. When the base of is standing, then we can also reach the level of Chachma, which is the level of the blue tzitzis. He's going to say, okay, skip the whole parentheses, which means we're going to the end. Skip the parentheses. Does that mean The parentheses ends with Hazois. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Two lines. One, two, three, four lines at the bottom of the paragraph. But after the, in the parentheses, it goes to the difference between the first basin and the second basin mikdash, and whether you're in the basin mikdash, you're out of the basin mikdash. But we leave that alone. Keeping it focused. But after the basin mikdash is destroyed, it's impossible to elicit only to the level of bina of ema, not higher than that. Therefore, even those Jews who had Tchelas as would have been appropriate for them because the Tchelas is available, so put on your Tchelas. But what the spiritual energy that they are elicited with their tzitzis, even with the blue Tchelas, didn't do any more than what we do now with our whites. Because, 
because that's the right. The base is the antenna for the spiritual energy of the trellis, and you don't have it. So even if you have the blue antenna, the, the blue trellis, you don't have the receptor. And all we say is that if you don't have that level, would you be climbing the mitzvah anyway? Okay, so the so not saying that they were wrong for wearing trellis. God forbid, because the halacha is put them on anyway. Sorry? No, it's still, it's still biblical. What, what do you mean? If we have the blue? Today, now? If this is the right one. Assuming the cuttlefish is the right one, then it would be biblical. Assuming it's the right one. But then Rashab is saying, I don't, I'm not going to go down that road of assuming. Because the pre Chaim and Alter Rebbe and now me are coming to the conclusion that as far Halakhly speaking, you've put the white citizen on, you fulfilled the mitzvah completely. And because we've been told that the spiritual energy connected to the blue tzitzis is not available to us, so we're leaving it alone. Right. And it could be yeah. hundreds that is the right blue, which is the spiritual It's energy. just not, it's correct. That's and now he's going to write, I must have cussed come on. He writes in the parentheses, see what I'm going to say later, because later he's going to say that maybe because they were tanoyim, they were able even post mikdash era to tap into mikdash energy. Right. That's what I was going to ask you. But he's going to say that later. That but at the moment he's saying, which would only mean that the Tanoim had that energy. A simple Jew who did that then, maybe not, right? But the same, Following? But the maybe only at, later is going to say that someone is on the level of a Tana or an Amoira, they, they, for them, the Beis Middash never was destroyed. He quotes the Gemara, which said that the Bishim Baruchai lives in a world, even though he's post-destruction, but in his world, the Beis Middash was never destroyed. Spiritually speaking, he was tapped into that energy. Okay, so they can wear Tchelas. But the average Jew who's wearing Tchelas is the same thing as us, spiritually speaking. Yeah. If they tap into their Sorry? Yeah. 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 Because we are who we are, we have this fixation on the gashness of it, and we're searching to fill it so that we can. Right. But look what he's about to say. It. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So let, let's see. Now let's, now let's see. So I kept on saying. So, yeah. So One second. So yes, yes, yes. We're, 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 we're at the point where we're exactly at the right point. Let's see, let's see the next two, word, two lines in the brass shop because we're exactly at the right point here. What we're understanding is the difference between the mitzvah and the spiritual energy of the mitzvah. This is what, this is what we're talking about here, right? right? Meaning the people post based on the era. Who wore the trellis that was definitely the right one because they still had it from tradition going back to Moshe Rabbeinu. That nothing stopped, right? Were they fulfilling the mitzvah of trellis? Certainly they were. Even if they weren't eliciting the spiritual energy, they still fulfilled the mitzvah, right? If that's the case, says the Rebbe Hashab, become a less, EF Shalemra. This is not good enough. The Mishum said, you put them in the mitzvah of trellis. Therefore, they're exempt. Therefore, because we can't get the spiritual energy, therefore, we're exempt from trellis. Trellis is still a mitzvah, even if we can't get the spiritual energy. The Vada mitzvah, mitzvah tzmidis. The mitzvah is a continuous, forever mitzvah. And if we have the capacity to fulfill it, presumably we'd have to we have to fulfill it. Exactly. Even if I can't elicit the spiritual energy, just like the guys who are not a tana and didn't have this special receptor, they're a regular guy. They wore the tchelis because it was available. So maybe I should also. Even if I'm not getting the spiritual energy, Rebbe is questioning. He's questioning himself. Yeah, right. he's going to be honest, right? He's not going to just. Right. So let's, so he's yeah. pushing. let's see. Right. Um, them, however, this is good. This is where we're going. Very good. It's humility. It's all an exercise in humility. It's true learning. Connected to your Yeah. Um, them, however, Mimash accosted the Priyat Chaim based on that which the Priyat Chaim says. Shire Tzitzis, Taich Perek Dalad, Bizal, citation, we're in the, it's, we're in the pre time to find this. We're there, the Arizal writes, the Chai Bital quoting Arizal writes, quote, Behine now, Hadalad Tzitzis Sha'anu Noigen, the four Tzitzis, the four streams, that we are accustomed to doing Acher Chobin after the strict destruction, etc. The Kulom Levenim, and all of them are white, Ki ain't Sichim Lechaber Satrelis, because we have no need to add the Trelis. The eight time uses the words, we have no need to add a trellis. I just finished saying, for lack of spiritual energy, okay, so it's not spiritual energy, but, but if you have it, you should still do it, right? For the mitzvah. For the mitzvah. But now we have that Rizal saying, ain't sorry, you don't need it. Almost as if you shouldn't, because you don't need it. I mean, you don't need it, it's a mitzvah. But it's, he says you don't need it, right? Likewise, it, well, let, let, let's see, let's see. Oh. 
Let's see. The chen kasev acha kacha. Likewise, the Priyat Chaim continues writing. They quote the insarach el atchelas lahashdem amispar. You don't need the blue to fulfill the number of strings which match the Kabbalistic energies. So we lost an insarach from the language of the Rebbeish of the Eitz Chaim, which says, "Quote insarach, you don't need the blue." Mashma, the implication is the insarach atel mitzvah tchelas. That nowadays you don't need the mitzvah of tchelas. Mezet tamua, and this is a very curious statement. How the Priyat Chaim says, "You think you don't need tchelas? It's a mitzvah of Torah. It's written right there." Therefore, we must suggest, says the Rabbi Hashab, the mashakos of Ein Sarach, that which the Eitz Chaim writes, Ein Sarach, you don't need Tchelas, to the Baruch Yos points. Don't need it for what? Don't need it for what? Not for the mitzvah. You don't need it for spiritual. the spiritual energy. He doesn't mean you don't need it as you don't need it at all. Because the mitzvah is there. You, it's a mitzvah. But for the spiritual energy, you don't need it. Hainu, le'inyin ha'shlamas ha'mispar la'dalat sisis, the prinus eima, bina de'ema. In order to get to the number four, which matches up the level of Bina of Ema, you don't need the blue. Now, Masha Ena Tchilas Naig Bismanazeh, and the fact that Tchilas isn't accustomed nowadays, Haika, the primary is, because we can't reach the higher level of Chachma of Ema, the Gamzed, the Lahashma, Mispar, the Lamad, Beis, Chutm, the Tzitzis, the Bina of Ema, ain't Sarah, the Tchilas, the Chena Naig. Because for the spiritual energy, neither for the higher level nor for the lower level, you don't need. Uh, blue. You can just get the number of four for the lower level, even if it's all white, and the higher level you can't get at all. Okay. So at this point, the Rebbe Hashab is kind of like in the middle here. It says there's no spiritual energy available in Tchelis, which is why we don't have the custom to do so nowadays. But that's not a good enough reason to reject it. That's a good enough reason to say I don't have to make my I don't have to I don't need it because the mitzvah is fulfilled anyway, right? We established last week. And even if you don't have the trailers, you fulfill the mitzvah of tzitzis completely, even on the halachic level. Right. So last week we already established the halachic speaking. If you have only white, you fulfill the mitzvah entirely. The no, biblically. Really? Certainly in Rambam, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. We looked at last week. That ain't, it's for the Gemara. Ain't trailers ma'akav ha'lovan, ba'in ha'lovan ma'akav ha'trailers. If you have the blue alone, you fulfill the mitzvah. If you have the white alone, you fulfill the mitzvah. Obviously optimal to have both. So that's, that's, that's taken care of. And we don't need, so we don't need it for the mitzvah. And we don't need to fulfill the mitzvah. Meaning, let me put it this way. If biblically speaking, one second. If biblically speaking, if biblically speaking, your white wasn't enough, you wouldn't be allowed to wear a four corner garment. But whatever the Rabbanon say, it's a biblical prohibition to wear four corner garment without kosher tzitzis. So the white we have must be completely and entirely kosher for the mitzvah in its entirety. Otherwise, we're in violation of biblical commandment and we walk around four corner garment. So it has to be completely uh, kosher, okay, right? right? Yeah. Now, as far as the trailers goes, the spiritual energy isn't there. So we don't need it nowadays. We don't need it for the spiritual energy. But why would we not seek it out simply because the Torah says so? Mm. Even if we're okay as far as the mitzvah of goes, we, we all look to fulfill the mitzvah in the best po possible manner. Right. And the best possible manner clearly here is to have trailers and the white. So why aren't we looking for it then? So I was saying last week about the hit there. Yeah. So let's see. Ah, but says the Nearly, it would seem appropriate to me, Lahire, to make note of the following. Alzeh, to cite to the following fact. From the idea of blowing shoifer on Shabbos or the lack thereof. The fact that we do not blow shofar on Shabbos, right? Even though it's a Shabbos biblical commandment. The east of the that's right. The east of the Mishnah. The Mishnah writes, "Nish perek dalad the Rosh Hashanah, beginning of chapter four of the tractate Rosh Hashanah." The Mikdash are taken. They would blow the shofar in the base of Mikdash. Avalei be Medina, but not the rest of the country. The rest of the country did not blow shofar on Shabbos. Uh, uh, the second line after the big words ach, after the period of the Gemara. Second line, yeah. Uba Gemara, and the Gemara says, Hatam, the reason why we don't blow Shafer on Shabbos in the rest of the country, Mishum Gzeda the Rabbah, because of Rabbah's decree. They what carry, was Rabbah's decree? Carry, Rabbah. That you might carry the Shafer on Shabbos. Yeah. You're ready to see how to blow. How to, to ask a question, how do you blow the Shafer? So it says that about Shab, the Be'emes, because in truth, Hadover Pella, this is extremely curious. Litchois mitzvahs ase. To push aside a biblical commandment, 
of Shoifer, Mishum Shach, Shash, Rachel, Kol Kach, in such a far fetched quiet case. Why is it so far fetched? Because most people are not blowing Shoifer. The rabbi blows Shoifer. He knows the questions, he knows the answers. He's not walking anywhere with a Shoifer. So, this far fetched thing of one guy who's not going to show to hear the Shoifer is going to, and that's why you're eradicating from thousands, millions of Jews a biblical commandment. Very, very strange. So enters Kabbalah and explains. And indeed, my great grand, my great grandfather, the Altarab, asked this question in Lukotera. In his commentary on Rosh Hashanah, in the section in which he explains this very Mishnah. The answer that the Altarab gives, and this answer that the Altarab gives becomes the basis for hundreds of my modern on Rosh Hashanah and the spiritual meaning of Rosh Hashanah. Explains the Altarab. Dilio is considering the fact that the Shabbos on Shabbos, the Lavachi, anyway, even without Shoifer, Yesh Hamshachas Ha'ar, the spiritual energy is elicited. Shemam Shikh Maidei Shoifer. Shabbos itself accomplishes that which Shoifer would have anyway. Right? And therefore, you don't need Shoifer. Now, if that's the case, why is it a biblical commandment? If on Shabbos you don't need shofar because spiritually speaking, the energy of Shabbos accomplishes that which shofar is supposed to accomplish. So then, maybe you should be exempt biblically. Right? And why are they even blowing shofar in, in the base Mekdash if you don't need it? Right? It, it does, yes, it does. It does as well. The only thing it does is matzah. It's a whole sikh about that. That's right. Matzah, you, that's, you right. Like that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, so where are we? Let's well, let, 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 let's get clear. So the Gemara says no shofar no shoshon on Shabbos because we're maybe you're going to carry. Alter was asking seriously, we're 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 abandoning a biblical commandment because of a maybe maybe. Answers Alter Rebbe, the reason the the real reason why the sages said you don't blow shofar on Shabbos is because you don't need it. But as we're going to see soon, the sages even when they enact. Uh, a, a decree that's based on a spiritual notion, they'll package it in a halachic thing. You have to have some halachic grounding to your spiritual claim. So what's the halachic grounding? Then maybe someone's going to carry it. But the real reason is not the issue of someone carrying. It's such a far-fetched issue to cancel a biblical mitzvah. The real reason why they're, can't, why they're saying no biblical mitzvah is because the spiritual energy is achieved anyway through Shabbos. But the halachic grounding is the fact that there's a maybe someone's going to carry it. Yeah. You're not allowed to <clears throat> you sound the chauffeur on shops. Yes. Back then, now. Because you really don't need it. I mean, what, that's right, because this because the spiritual Shabbos. energy that shop that chauffeur elicits, Shabbos does it automatically. It does, but this that's right. Add to it. Oh, so now that's question. That, that's right. So now the question becomes and, so if so, if if there if Shabbos, now this is where we are right now. If Shabbos, anyways achieves everything Shefer does, then why would there be a biblical mandate to blow a Shefer on Shabbos? And why would they blow a Shefer on the Beth Mikdash? Right? So let's see. So meaning, because there's levels here. Let's see. And there's an error. Let's say it's an error. Yeah, exactly. What, what, what if I take... Blow? <coughs> no, they wouldn't. What if I take my Shefer? <coughs> what if I take the Shefer and I chain it down to my Bimra? I still can't blow a shofar on Shabbos because no, the sages said not to. You, no, he didn't say. He said you may carry it, but you're not going to carry it. Exactly. So what if I chain my shofar down to my bima? I'm never going to carry it. It's chained to the bima. I still can't blow a shofar on Shabbos because the sages well, say no. no. Be that's the you're point. Reason, See, all these exactly. So all these. That that's right. So all these things. All these things point to what we're trying to claim we're making here. That the say that these enactments start out start out from the spiritual issue, and then they find grounding in halacha, because the halacha grounding here is very tenuous. Right, because you can't just you can't just impose a halachic decision based on only spiritual truth. You have to have it has to manifest in some sort of halacha you can point to. So they point to halacha. You might carry, but deeper, what's going on here is the fact that the shofar, the Shabbos achieves what shofar does anyway. Well, what, what, yeah, but okay. Forget, what? What? What do you mean? Why forbid sounding the shofar? Because of the because of, well, because you no because you anyways are accomplishing the shofar. So why blow it if it might lead to someone violating? Well, so Even if it might... In a that's my point. It is. It is. In other words, you don't need it anyway. And because you don't need it, let's keep it away because maybe someone's going to do something wrong. Following? Yeah, but, yes. Sorry? 
I thought we were putting cart before the No, no, no. We have spiritual reasons, but we've got to help satisfy the people with Allah. No, no, they go together. In other words, if it was if it was just this shash, they wouldn't do it. If it was just this shash, they wouldn't cancel a biblical mitzvah. If, if it was only the shash of someone carrying. That's all it is. No, it's not. It's spiritual energy here. No. It's, if, if the shofar achieved more than Shabbos, spiritually, then the shash wouldn't be enough to cancel a mitzvah. That's what Altair was arguing. Yes, we have yes, to blow on Shabbos. Like the the Altair was arguing that if the energy of Shoifar reached higher than Shabbos, there's no way the sages could have come and cancel it. They wouldn't have done it. So why, did they, why did they? Because you're anyways achieving the spiritual accomplishment of Shabbos. And because you're anyways achieving so this... One second. One second. Oh, so that's the next question. We'll get to you in a second. Oh, now you're asking the right question. But because you're anyways achieving the spiritual energy on Shabbos, therefore, because maybe someone's going to carry, we'll hold it off. But it starts with the fact that you're anyways achieving. Following, but it, okay. So let's see. Let's see. We come up with the last. Let's let's read. The rabbi. The rabbi wasn't the, that wasn't the chassid against. It. They didn't know that, right? Rabbi himself he knew it better than that. me and you. Yeah, but he wouldn't say about carrying that. Because in the Gemara, like no, said that. in the Gemara, you write. No. In other words, when you're writing the Gemara, so, but if he is writing the Gemara, why didn't put the thing? But it says the Arab, you could do it. That's it, it, you're proving so my point. Yes, you're proving my point more. Why? Because you if can't, you're gonna carry the it. very fact, the very fact that he says unqualif unqualified, nobody blows shay for you, but they have an of whether you change it down no matter what. Why? That is a raya that the real reason is because of the spiritual energy to achieve anyway. That's the point. You're proving my point. Said, why does he just say that? Okay, that's a different question energy? as to how Torah is structured and why certain messages are, are related in Kabbalah and certain messages are related in Gemara. That's a different story. But this is this this proves the point, not undermines the point. So, okay, let, let's go forward. We're, we're getting stuck here. What? It's not it's not clear. No, it's clear, but I'm just having another argument. Okay, quick, last argument, then we'll go forward. No? I'm saying the argument, here, here we're, now we're saying, oh, because of the fire and the Beit Mikdash from Shabbos, it's a spiritual energy. Meanwhile, what before the original argument the tefillin was a spiritual energy? Sorry? I'm saying the original argument was That's why he said before. That's why he said. So he said to who? You no, Farquet. Farquet, that's what he said. he said. He said before, don't take unless you're told. Over here, when it comes to Shefer, we are told, don't do it on Shabbos. So don't go canceling Tefillah based on your understanding of the spiritual energy. But here we're being told cancel Shefer and Shabbos. And when you're being told, you listen. And we're being told by their Rizal. You don't need Tefillah, so we listen. Don't go comparing to something we weren't told about. Right? Okay, let's go forward. The come back not to the question you're all asking. Minat Torah, biblically speaking, mitzvah v'chiyuv, it's a mitzvah and obligation, l'tkoya gam k'shechob Shabbos. Biblically speaking, excuse me, we are obligated to blow Shefer and Shabbos. Why is that a mitzvah? If, if, if spiritually speaking, it's, it's irrelevant. So the Torah itself should say, blow shayfar except for on Shabbos. Right? Mavur so the altar explains there. There are a number of levels in the level called Tainug. Tainug is the level of shayfar, and Tainug is also the level of Shabbos. But there are a number of levels within the level of Tainug. Tainug means the light. And through the shayfar, nimshich Tainug el yoyser. Shaifar reaches a higher level of Tainug than Shabbos does. But what's, let's wait. Asher Muvdel Be'erech, which is relatively speaking beyond, Hamshachas HaTainug Shabbos, the energy of Tainug from Shabbos. Okay, so Shaifar is higher than Shabbos, spiritually. Which is why on Shabbos, biblically speaking, we have to blow the Shaifar. Now, one second. Why? If the Shaifar energy is higher than Shabbos, then why are the sage is pushing it away? Ah, but... The, the sages pushed away the biblical obligation on Shabbos. Is man by Shini during the second basin mikdash? Nowadays, post first temple, we cannot reach through our shofar the higher level of, of shofar. Now it's in biblical times, shofar reached higher than Shabbos. Post basin mikdash, our shofar reaches equal to Shabbos. He said this mud by is chain, not after. That's when they canceled it. Because only in the first, only before then you were able to reach. So bef during times of bias Vishen, before they canceled the shoifer on Shabbos, the shoifer reached to the true level of shoifer, which is beyond Shabbos. Once this first basin English is gone, the shoifer's energy is no longer the same, and it only reaches equal to Shabbos. So in the second basin and it's that time when they, they came along and made this Xeda. In the second basin they didn't blow it on Shabbos. Oh, now, not only in the business itself, but outside. Why? In the business itself, it did blow the shofar on the second business. 
Because the base of Mikdash being the gateway to heaven in that place, they were able to tap into the original Shaifar energy of the first temple of Mikdash, of Bakvulin, but not in the rest of the country. Okay. Now, the parentheses, he says, what we said earlier, that it could be the same thing is true of, of Tehles, of the blue string, and therefore the Tanoim, who lived post base of Mikdash, when the level of Tehles is no longer available, for them, who are Tanoim, who are connected to base of Mikdash, for them, Tehles didn't work. Just like in the second base of Mikdash, to ordinary people, Shreifer did not reach beyond the Shabbos level. But Shreifer and base of Mikdash does reach beyond the Shabbos level. Okay, now let's go. Let's go forward. Now, let's go to um, he gives another ex- Kabbalistic explanation for why we don't blush for on Shabbos. Similar explanation, but a bit different. So let's go to count the bottom of the end of the paragraph there. One, two, three, four, five lines up. The line starts with the word mine, mina, and the fifth word is ma. It's so the same, the same page, the same paragraph, but after the period it says a To your question, Abarchil. Now, this fact that the sages, uh, Tolu means they, they, they depended that enactment to cancel Shoifar on the, on the stretch that maybe someone's going to carry, which we understand now to mean, after this whole like, Kabbalistic explanation, we understand that to mean like this. The sages understood that on Shabbos, you're anyways achieving everything you're going to achieve on Shabbos. And if there's no need for it, spiritually speaking, right? And therefore, because you are not going to achieve it anyway, therefore they said, don't do it because maybe someone's going to carry on Shabbos and that would be worse. So it says that uh, I could do the same thing for out for Titus. There's a shash when it comes to Titus too. There's a shash when it comes to Titus too. Namely, Yaspik Khan, here, too, we have the issue, hachshash, the, the doubt, the kilayim of shatness, mixed wool and linen, shaloi b'maka mitzvah, when the mitzvah is not there, b'frat b'talas k'tarton, especially when it comes to the smaller talas, not the big talas. So let's, let's see, uh, let's see why. So let's go to, let's go to the other booklet, look at the last page, you'll see the Dalton Rishon I have it up here. I have it up here? No, I don't. Can I see if I have it? Yes, Well, I don't have it on my. I don't have it on the, on the screen here. Um, oh, thank you. Wait, there should be another. There should be another. No, it's not here. Okay. So in English, it's like this. Although the court of Tchelas mentioned in the Torah refers to the blue dye wool, right? So it should be wool. Remember we discussed this last week. Yeah. Whether Tchelas, when it comes to this, includes the material or just the color, the difference of opinion on that. According to some opinions, Tehillus also must be wool, not just the dye color. Okay, so although the court of Tehillus mentioned in the title refers to blue dye wool, according to scriptural law, by the way, we're reading the Alter Bishop Hanaruch, uh, section nine. According to scriptural law, it may be attached even to a palace of flax, linen. So, so the, the Tehillus must be wool, otherwise it's not Tehillus. And you're still allowed to wear it on a linen garment because the use of mixture of fibers is permitted for tzitzis. You have a positive commandment to wear tzitzis. A negative commandment, thou shalt not mix wool and linen. Positive commandment overrides the negative. Okay. Nevertheless, our sages forbade the use of woolen tzitzis on garments of linen, lest they also be attached to a linen garment worn at night. In which case, we'll be wearing a forbidden mixture of fibers at a time when the mitzvah does not apply. No. Tied onto the corner doesn't count as shotness. I don't know. It doesn't say that here. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. Doesn't say that that's right, but so at, what's the uh, problem? What's the whole one second at night? One second. 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 At night, what is there's no obligation to wear tzitzis at night. The mitzvah of tzitzis is only during the day. So if you are willing wearing woolen linen tzitzis, which is perfectly fine, because you're allowed to have mixed woolen linen on your tzitzis, but as soon as nightfall hits, you have to take that clothes off. 
Because it's no longer a mitzvah. Which is why they said, don't put tcheles on to linen tzitzis. Because you put tcheles on to woolen tzitzis. Even white, tcheles is... Even, what's the difference? You're because, white because, the oh, because the white doesn't have to be wool. The tcheles has to be wool. Uh, Follow? Tcheles has to be wool. Let's read it again. So Nevertheless, the here you get, uh, the only it's better off the other way around. So the same way the sages had a shash, the same way the sages had a shash, some of my carry, we have a shash here, someone might have one linen tzitzis, and that's why he says especially the small tzitzis. Because those are the, 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 big, the big talus, you, you don't wear at night, you only wear it in the morning. Right. But the, day, the regular tzitzis, you're wearing, right? we're all wearing our, our, our small tzitzis, and it's nighttime now. And if we happen to have trellis on, and we have to have a linen garment, we have to take it off. And who knows how many Jews would end up killing See? As, as he goes up to say, sorry? But with all our tits is a shot. There's a, there's a wool bag in, and the tits are. So no, we have wool. We have only wool. So That's the thing. We, we, we only do wool. The, wool. Chabad does wool, 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 everything for another reason, because it's best yeah. to have your tits match your, match your bag it. The silk corner, yeah. Let, let's continue reading. So yeah. let's read again. Nevertheless, our sages forbade the use of wool and tits on a not to put tzitzis on linen, lest they also be attached to a linen garment worn at night, in which case we'll be wearing a forbidden mixture of fibers at a time when the mix of tzitzis not apply. So don't wear linen tzitzis, because if you're linen tzitzis and woolen garment and you wear it at nighttime, no good. It is forbidden to attach even tzitzis of linen to a talus of linen. There's no problem here. Lest one attach a thread of woolen trellis to the talus, because trellis is only wool. So if you have a linen tzitzis completely, which is seemingly fine, because it's, it's linen garment with linen strings, no problem. But maybe you're going to come upon Rabbi Rajiner and get a woolen trellis and say, hey, look, I found trellis. Let me put it on my tzitzis. And now you're carrying woolen linen. Now you're wearing woolen linen at night. Therefore, says the Shulchan Aruch, don't wear linen tzitzis. Right? So then why do they wear it at night? Second, why do we wear it at night? Damn, whoever wears the blue, if it's wool. They should have uh, it. Oh, well, they were probably wearing gold wool garments. They must be wearing gold garments. Or they're wearing wool garments. No. They or the wool, they're, the they're garment is wool. They're sleeping where the sisters. They probably are, and they're only yeah. and they're only wearing wool garments. Right? Take it to me out there a bit. All the sisters are, are are wool. Yeah. Oh, and the garment, and the garment itself. Or cotton. Yeah. One the, one should therefore never make a talus of linen, flax, for there's no obligation whatsoever to attach this to it. Now. When does the above apply at a time when the dye of trellis was available? In the present age, when it is not available, it is not relevant to forbid the use of linen tzitzis on a, on a, on a linen palace with a garment. Nowadays, when you have no trellis, there's no reason to forbid linen strings to linen garments because you're never going to put wool on anyway. Anyway, when trellis is available, then you can't have linen tzitzis with linen garment because you might find trellis and attach it and then you have an issue. But because trellis is not available nowadays, no problem. Where you're willing to sit with your linen garment. So it says that Rabbi Shabbat to the Rajin there, you're reintroducing a problem here. And maybe that's why trellis was held off to begin with. Just like the sages said when it comes to the shoifer. The spiritual energy of shoifer is accomplished anyway. And because of that, maybe someone's going to carry, no reason to do it. It's the same thing here. The mitzvah of tzitzis is, it's even more than tzitzis, than Rosh Hashanah. Because on Rosh Hashanah, when you don't do shoifer, the biblical mitzvah of shoifer is not done. The spiritual energy is done, not the biblical mitzvah. But when it comes to tzitzis, the mitzvah of tzitzis is done just with the white. Completely fully done. And the spiritual energy is accomplished. And if there's a maybe, maybe someone's going to have woolen linen, don't wear it. Following? Very smart. Very, very, very deep idea. So again, see. So Yasbik can't be enough here. Back to the back to the Rebbe Shab. In the present age, it is not available. Footnote nine. Yeah, it's probably setting from the source. The comma, uh, the, the doubt, maybe the person's going to end up with, with shotness. Shall I make a mitzvah when there's no mitzvah if he wears it at night? With frat batalis cotton, especially the small talis, which you wear all day. The comma, nashim shutim, many simple, ordinary people, noisim shalem mitzvah, they wear garments, a lot of wool, maybe of linen. And if they find that trellis is available, they're going to add it to their tzitzis. The imyiyah, inyin atchelis davar shavu lachal nefesh. 
if Tchelis is indeed something that everyone should be getting, as you, Radzina, are claiming, which indeed that should be the case if we're going to call it an obligation. It's not such a far fetched uh, 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 issue that someone who has a linen pair of tits will add it to his bag to add it to his garment and end up wearing uh, shotness at night, mixed wool and linen at night. It's exactly the same thing as blowing the shofar. Everybody knows that everybody knows that they're obligated in shofar. Says the Gemara, they ain't a couple kian, but not everybody knows how to do it. And therefore, someone's going to carry. So everybody has small tzitzis, but not everybody knows, oh, my tzitzis is linen and tchelis is wool. I shouldn't mix it. I have to take it off at night. Not everybody knows that. And therefore, this shash combined with the fact that the spiritual energy of tchelis is anyway achieved, that's why we're going to, that's why we are no longer wearing tchelis, especially considering the fact that the mitzvah is fulfilled in its entirely just with the white. Clear? Okay, we'll conclude. Let's conclude quickly. We call Yisrael. Now, you make the claim, says the Rav Shatera or your father made the claim, that the reason why Taylor stopped is because it was too expensive and too difficult to get. That's what you're claiming. That's the first time we're Yeah. That. Sorry? Well, that. we never read the Rav oh. uh, claim, right? But it's the Rav response. So, Gama Davar Azad, this thing that you, your father, says, Litloi Sibis Betula, we call you Cyril to say that the reason why all Jewish people stop using Trelas, Gami Yechide Skula, even from the mugs, even from the most unique and special Jews, Mishim Yoki Mitsyusa, because of how precious the item is, shall Trelas of Trelas, Kavid Lakabo. It's difficult for me to accept that the reason why generations of good Jews didn't wear Trelas is because it's too difficult to get. Hard for me to accept that, says the Rebbe Shab. The Shamaiti, I heard, says the Rebbe Shab. In the times of my great grandfather, the Alter Rebbe, there were great wars in the world. The Alter Rebbe lived through a few wars. He was in the Napoleonic War. I think he was also alive during the Russo Japanese War. Maybe that came later. But the war, sorry? Well, right, the rest of it was many years later, but there was an earlier war, uh, much earlier before. What was the, the, Russia was in a war before Napoleon. Or was Napoleon's war? Napoleon was Must be Napoleon's war. war. Yeah, Russian Jupiter's war was much, much later. Yeah. Russians with Napoleon. Okay, so says the Rabbi Shab, I heard that when my great grandfather the Alter Rebbe, there was a time when there was a big war in the world. And he was in doubt. He was worried he may not get the famous Yandavir Calabria as from from Italy. My great grandfather wanted to send a special messenger to those uh, to those that area in Italy to bring a esrig. Even though biblically speaking, you have to have an esrig from Calabria. No, no. but for the Alt Rebbe, he was willing to send a messenger during wartime to get him an esrig in, in Yanava. And how would it be possible that the great amongst Jews would not try with all their strength and vigor to get the trellis? Remember, we're talking here in the late 1800s. And for all this time, no Jews had it in them to go find trellis. There must be more going on. There were, used, there were Jews who put their lives on the line for, 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 a hidden mit, for a mitzvah. And no one tried to go get trellis. And you're saying the reason why they didn't do it is because it's too difficult. Since when did it difficult to become a problem for Jews to do mitzvahs? Even a mitzvah behidur. So it must be that they understood trellis is not for now. Or does it exist at this point? Therefore, so why did no one try to do what you're doing? In other words, you, the Rajin, are saying, you're claiming that you found the existing Chalas. Let's say you're right. So why did no one 100 years ago do that? Search for it. 200 years ago, 500 years ago. Even the times when it was slowly dissipating. There should have been Jews then who would fight in the life to keep it. That's not yeah? the reason. It's because it's so expensive. Because time wise, not it's all in you. Because more than people bail comes in 1976. It's the time for it. Time doesn't, it's not. Okay, but time's a different story. The question is if it's expensive. And that's what he said, what is expensive? That I can understand. They break their head to do a mitzvah, but don't say it's not the time. Time wise, it's no, not. he's because they're a band come up with things. Oh, now's the time to do mitzvah. So now's the time to do mitzvah. So right, so no, so you, you, you are claiming, that's what you're saying. You are claiming, wise, you're claiming, wise, you're wise. claiming the reason why they're not doing it because it's too difficult. So they're my shop, hardly accept that. It's difficult, so it's too expensive. Yeah, okay, too expensive. Two yeah. different things. 
I don't think but even difficulty, they would have, wouldn't have been a problem for them. The, the, the Rebbe Shabbos comparing it to the Alter Rebbe sending Shluchim during wartime to 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 yeah, Yanova to get Esrei. Anyway, okay. Inki ain't a dem la Esrei. Even though Esrei is not the same thing as the Tchelas, the Tchelas suchim without mitzvah sadavar. You have to actually know the truth of the matter. So the Tchelas amiti if it's actually Tchelas. Meaning, when it comes to Esrei, we know this is the best Esrei. So go fight for it. When it comes to Tchelas, maybe we're not sure. Maybe that's why they didn't fight. Nevertheless, the great sages of, and the great tzaddikim of our gener- of our people would have not rested their hands from trying with an extra effort. Difficulty. To find the chilazin, or at least find the right color. Especially based on that which you say, Radziner, your father says, Shagam the Radziner writes like this. First, he goes on to explain that he's that this is the white color. Then he says, even if I'm wrong, what did you lose by painting it blue? So paint it blue. She says that Rabbi if you're right, that you lose nothing by painting it blue, then why didn't Jews do this for thousands, for hundreds of years? They should have tried to find it. And even if they're wrong, what do you lose? So it must be because they understood that they took the Yitzchayim, that Alpi Kabbalah, there's no need for the Tchelas. That's what they didn't do it. Otherwise, they would have, because like you're saying, there's a loss. And they, they would have put all the efforts if they could. How come no one did? Okay. Here, here he's telling Kelly, you don't know what you're talking about. He's telling a very comedic right. diplomatically, yeah. Man, yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. So concludes, clearly. sorry? Clearly. Last line. Well, this is the next, the next thing is a very, is a very nice line. Is everyone to say? No, I'm still stuck on this color. Because the sitter says it's blue. Hmm. Okay. The Chumash over here says sky blue. And the French version in the uh, art school says turquoise. It's all the same blue. No, it's, it's, a, it's, the same thing. it's a type of blue. Rambam wrote that it was a blue that you see when the sun is out. Right, it's a type of blue. But anyway, okay, let's conclude. I want to conclude the Rashab's line, and then we'll go to Mincha, because this is very, very nice. The, the fish that you describe as the chilazan in your book called Pil Tchelas, in your father's book, it seems to me clear, that I saw this chilazan, this, this cuttlefish, about 20 years ago, says the Rashab, back in to Berlin. I visited Berlin, I went to the aquarium, and I saw the cuttlefish that you, that you identified. I saw a small animal, animal. and it emits this black musk, which blackens the water around it. So I saw the thing you're talking about, I know what you're talking about, but because I never considered that this might be the chalazin. I didn't get to investigate the fish and look at all the details. So I can't confirm or deny your claim that this is it. But I did see it when I was in the aquarium in Berlin. So, and why am I mentioning this? Because it's a big discussion in Alacha if you're allowed to go to a zoo or an aquarium. If you're allowed to yeah. why? why? Because you're promoting Sarva Lachayim. Here you see that Rabbi Shabbos says he went to an aquarium. So you could go. And then Rabbi also went to an aquarium. I uh, went to a zoo when he was in Berlin. That means you could go. Yeah. Going with, going with this reasoning oh. that we follow our Rebbe's, here that Rebbe writes and testifies he went to an aquarium. He said, I went to an aquarium and I saw this cuttlefish. He concludes with blessings and thank yous for the books. Okay. But you could also say it's like... So there we go. There we have right. Chabad position. You're in the Rebbe Shabbos washing? Hmm? So this, with the washing, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. idea as this here. Very similar, yeah. Because... So I didn't. As, as like last week, if you have any suggestions for next week's topic, please submit them by Tuesday. So at least I have two days of research, two days to research for uh, next Thursday night. Hexaplist trunks unit. Let's get another animal.